Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be installing Kali Linux on VirtualBox using a Windows 10 machine. I'm here on the KaliLinux.org website where we're going to hit the Get Kali so we can get an image in order to install Kali on a virtual machine. They've redesigned the website recently, so make sure to smash that like button for me for this fresh tutorial on how to install things. Really, the two options that we're concerned about is the bare metal and the virtual machines option. We're going with bare metal today because we want to actually install Kali Linux by ourselves. The virtual machine edition allows you to download a pre-built image that Kali already made for you, exported that image so you can re-import it on to things such as VMware and VirtualBox. Again, bare metal, we're going the standard route that you have to with most Linux distributions. So we'll click on that and that will take us down to the bare metal section. Here we'll want to scroll down until we see the installer. We have a weekly build, the normal build, and a net installer. We also have the availability between 64-bit architecture, 32-bit architecture, and the Apple M1 architecture. I'm selecting 64-bit since that's my CPU architecture, and I'm selecting the one in the middle called the installer. And if you click on the middle here, that will actually launch the download. I'm going to save this in my downloads by hitting save and letting the file finish downloading. One other thing I'll make mention of is if you don't have the VirtualBox app yet for your computer, this is what will create and run our virtual machine. You can go to virtualbox.org, click the download VirtualBox button, and since we're installing this on a Windows machine, we'll click Windows Hosts, which will allow you to download and install this application as well. The install portion of that is much like any other application, just run through the wizard and you shouldn't have any problems there. One extra thing I'll mention is you'll need to enable virtualization support in your BIOS settings, so if you have any types of errors while trying to start or create your machine, such as the 64-bit option missing when you create a virtual machine, that's probably because you need to go and enable that setup inside your BIOS. After the VirtualBox app is installed, let's go to the start menu and launch that app by typing VirtualBox in. And here we go, I'm going to launch this application. Once things are up and running, you'll see a similar page to this where you can select new, or you can go to machine and actually create a new one from here. And since we're doing Kali Linux on this virtual machine, I'll do Kali Linux and I'll just put VM here to denote that it's a virtual machine. Next, I'll select the type of operating system I plan on installing. Linux is correct. It already predefined that for me. Following that, I will go down and select a Debian 64-bit. Since Kali Linux is based off of Debian, this will probably emulate it the best. Other than that, we have our machine folder. This is the location where the virtual machine will be located. The default is fine for me. You can, of course, change this if, if you want your machine in a different location. Then I'll hit next. Here we get to select our memory size but before we do make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more linux tips and tricks and operating system videos here the recommended size is a gig but we'll want more than that i believe you need at least two gigs here to run cali the the more you can give it the better so i'm going for eight gigs here the one thing i'll mention is try to stay out of the orange and red zones that means you could potentially starve your own system of memory if you go too high staying in the green is usually the best practice once you selected how much memory or ram you want to give to the virtual machine you can hit next we're asked what we want to do with the hard disk and we want to create a virtual hard disk now so that default option that's already selected is great i'm going to click create following that we get to select an option for which type of hard disk image we want to create and there's really three options vdi is native to virtual box so i'll keep it that VHD or VMDK might make more sense if you're trying to export the virtual machine image to another virtualization software in the future. You can read up on that, but the default's fine. I'm hitting next. Following that, we get to select whether we want to dynamically allocate our hard disk file or have it at a fixed size. We'll take advantage of the dynamic allocation. All this means is as the operating system and the files on that operating system grow, so will our virtual machine hard disk file versus if you selected a fixed size, that means you're fixed to a specific size right out of the gates, which will use up much more storage space on your host computer initially. With that selected, you can hit next. Here we get to actually specify what's the maximum size that we want our hard disk to be for the virtual machine. I usually suggest with Debian-based systems to go at least 32 gigs. I'm going with 64 since I got plenty on my system here with over a terabyte, and I'm then going to hit create. This will actually create our virtual machine. As we can see up here, it says 64 denoting 64-bit. We got the Debian logo with Kali Linux VM named. 
I'll make sure that Kali Linux VM is selected. So whatever you have created now, select it and hit the settings button or right click and hit settings as well. We do wanna spend a few moments going through these settings to make sure that our Kali emulation on this VM will run great. We'll keep this section all the same. Let's go to system. And in system, I want to enable EFI. It says for special OSs only, but now typically most modern computers are EFI BIOS based. So this enables us to emulate an EFI based BIOS system. So that's why I select that most operating systems support that nowadays. And then if we go down to storage, we can click on our controller, which says IDE and currently the disk here is empty. Click on that disk and let's load the disk in, which is that image that we just got done downloading. If we click on this disk here, then we can choose a disk file. And in my downloads, I see Kali Linux. I have the 2021 version dot two installer for an AMD 64 bit architecture. I'll click on that and hit open. Once that's opened, I see now the Kali Linux is loaded in here to this emulated ID disk controller, which is great. You can continue to go down through settings. I like to disable my audio. I don't need it shared. My network, I'll keep it as NAT, which is just a shared network between your host computer and the virtual machine. And finally in the user interface, I like to sometimes uncheck this box, but I'll keep it on for now because we'll need to use it later. Hit OK. And we're just about to start the install process of Kali Linux on the virtual machine. Make sure to smash that like button and let's hit start to turn on the machine. You may or may not get a pop up like this, which just says, what do you want to start with this virtual machine? And since it has nothing on it, you can use the drop down and click on various different ISO files available. I'm going with the Kali Linux 2021 that we loaded in a moment ago, and then I'm going to hit start. All right. And if things load properly, what we'll see here is we're welcomed by the installer and we're asked, which option do we want to select? We want the graphical install method. Let's press enter on that and let things load up here. You might see some messages scroll across the screen. No big deal. What you should get though is once you're in the installer, the select a language screen. I'll select English for myself. You can scroll through to find something that better suits you if needed and then hit continue. Following that, we get to select our location. Mine's the United States. Again, select wherever you're at and hit continue. Make sure to set your key map for your keyboard depending on what region you're in. Mine's American English, the default, so I'll hit continue. A few things will scroll right past real quick as media gets detected and certain components get loaded for the installer. All right, after that, it's asking us to configure our network by giving a host name. You can create yours to be whatever you want. This is what other computers on the same network will recognize you as. I'll call mine Savvy Nick and hit continue. As far as a domain name goes, I don't have one for my network, so I'll skip this step by hitting continue. Now I'm being asked for a new user account. So I'll put that in and I'll create mine to be Savvy Nick. Yours can be whatever you like. This is your normal user account and then hit continue. Again, it's asking us, the last one was the name. This is the actual username. I'm reusing Savvy Nick, that's fine. Now we get to choose a password for that normal user. I'm gonna put a password in and then confirm that password in the second box. And once I have that, I will hit continue. Make sure to remember this password to get in. Now we're configuring the clock for the operating system. Choose your time zone and then hit continue. The next screen lets us partition our disks. We'll select the guided use entire disk method here and then hit continue. Here's the VBox hard disk image that we got done creating a moment ago. It's around 64 gigs. It might be a little over here, but we know it belongs to VBox and it's the only one we can select here in our virtual machine environment. So I'll hit continue. Now we're being asked what type of scheme do we want to use for this hard disk partitioning? I'm going with all files in one partition, which is recommended for new users. We won't talk about the rest right now and hit continue. Following that, we're given what's going to happen with our disk here. So I'll select the finish partitioning and write changes to disk, hit continue on that. Now we're being told once more, before we make these changes, this is what's going to happen to our disks and that we're creating three partitions, one for booting purposes, the second to really store everything on your Kali system. And then finally a swap file, which serves for extra overflow for memory. Do I want to write the changes to the disk? Yes, I do. That all looks good to me. Then I'll hit continue. It'll take a moment and then it will start installing the base system here for Kali Linux, as well as all the necessary packages that are included with the installer. Now this might take a few minutes in order to finish up.
All right, once the base system has been installed and set up here, we're asked what software we wanna select. Notice some checkbox is already filled in for us. Mainly we have XFCE, GNOME, and KD Plasma as our choices for desktop environments. If you don't know what those are, go check them out. They will give you a different look and feel to your desktop. So make sure you select the one you like the most. And then as far as the collection of tools, top 10 and default recommended tools, I always keep the defaults here. You can always add or subtract those later. So the default here is all fine for me. I'm going with XFCE, which is Kali Linux's default desktop environment. Make sure you do have one of these three checked or else as it says up here, it's a nice note that they give you now. Selecting this item has no effect. So if you only had this selected, you wouldn't have a desktop environment actually installed for you. Let's hit continue. And now it will install the rest of the necessary packages and software that the system needs in order to run everything that was selected. This might take a few minutes, but we're getting very close to finishing our install of Kali Linux in a virtual machine on a Windows computer. All right, and once your installation is complete, it will tell you here, and we can hit the continue button in order to restart things here to finish up the process. I'll hit continue, things will close down, and it might even reload into the actual Kali Linux system. If things shut down all the way for you, no big deal. I do wanna show you with the machine actually powered down what things look like. If we go to settings, we want to confirm in the storage that the ID is now empty. If it's not, make sure to remove the disk from the virtual drive. You don't want to boot back into the installer. Once you've confirmed this, you can power on your virtual machine. Power on your virtual machine by selecting it and hitting start. And if you get this window here where it says Kali GNU Linux, you've successfully installed things. I stopped the bootloader from booting things all the way up, but we have Kali officially installed on our virtual machine in Windows 10. I'm gonna press enter and select that option let things load right up. If you want to go into full screen mode, you can by hitting Control F or selecting view and then full screen mode. I'm gonna keep it in this mode for now just to have some access to things. We'll need to type in a username first. So the user I created was Savvy Nick. I'll type in Savvy Nick's password and hit login. Again, congratulations if you made it this far. You've successfully installed Kali Linux alongside your Windows computer in a virtual machine. Awesome job. I'm going into full screen mode now by hitting control F and hitting switch because this will give me a better resolution so I can interact with my system. Things are looking great now. It looks seamless even though I'm using Windows in the background. Kali Linux is here along for the ride. Another thing I'll mention is if you're in full screen mode, you can always go to the bottom here and make changes such as minimize things to get back to your Windows desktop. But I do like using the full screen mode most of the time. Another thing I'll mention is you'll probably want to hit devices and hit the insert guest edition CD image. This will allow you to install a few extra tools and drivers that will help your virtual machine and Kali Linux work better together. So if we click on here, we can run this installation here. I'll let you look up how to actually install this. It changes from Linux distribution to Linux distribution, but it will automatically mount that CD. Besides that, let's explore our newly installed Kali Linux image. If we go to the top left, we have the applications. So here are all the wonderful applications that are given to us by Kali Linux, which allow us to pen test and look for security vulnerabilities. We have such things as information gathering, vulnerability analysis, web application analysis, database assessment, password attacks, wireless attacks, reverse engineering, exploitation tools, and many more down here. All a bunch of sections, all with their respected tools. Make sure to check them out and read about them. We also have settings and our favorite or usual applications. The user is down here at the bottom logged in and you can log out or get to settings from these two icons below. You can also resize this as necessary and search for anything that you want, such as display settings in the top. You notice that you'll have a few icons on the back, so you can put more files and icons on the background here and move them around to your liking. Again, towards the top left here, we have minimize all open windows. If you click this button, we have the home user and its directories. If you just click on the button, 
So we can launch various different home user directories directly from here. Moving on, we have Mousepad, a simple text editor, the web browser, which is Firefox by default, a terminal emulator, which you can launch, and this uses ZSH by default. And then to the right of that, a few workspaces that you can be working with in between. On the right-hand side, we have the time and date, the wired or wireless connection, sound, notifications, settings and presentation mode, locking the screen, and finally logging out. If you click on that, that will shut down, restart, or suspend the machine accordingly. But that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.